Hello world, this is Random Fix. In this video today, we're going to be trying a bi-directional scan tool here from Xtool. And this model originally came out in 2020. And this is the 2022 version of the Xtool EZ400 Pro. And in this video today, we're going to go ahead and try it out here on this Mercedes. I'm going to show you guys what's in the box. And lastly, I'm going to go ahead and give it a Random Fix tool grade so you guys can make a better decision for yourself. Stay tuned. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. So we got the EZ400 Pro here, the 2022 version here. And I'm gonna go ahead and try this out. I've already gone ahead and set up this device and to set this up, all you gotta do is connect it to Wi-Fi, no email, no serial number, no password to type in. Everything works straight out of the box. And the nice thing is it includes three years of updates and a two-year warranty. So that's definitely pretty cool that you get this on a consumer-grade product. As most scan tools do not come with a two-year warranty for this price point. So let's go ahead and hook this up here to the Mercedes. I got an airbag light from replacing an inverter underneath that seat. And let's see how well this does. And just like all scan tools, to go ahead and connect this, just connect it to your OBD2 port. We're gonna check out all the connectors later on. Turn the ignition on to where the check engine light turns on. And now we can go ahead and use the scan tool here. So we have my account, the auto scan, diagnose. In purple, we have the special functions. We got reports, updates, settings, remote control access, and some additional settings. So this is the account main screen here. And if you scroll down, you can go ahead and get access to the time your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and airplane mode, and you can change the orientation. You can go ahead and hit settings right there. I'm gonna make this really bright here for the video. Under the account settings, it'll display for you your serial number, your activation date, and when your subscription expires, we have the auto scan function here, diagnose, the special functions, and this particular scan tool currently has a total of 16 built-in special functions. So other scan tools from Xtool like the D8 and the D7 have a few more resets. This one is limited to 16. And we got the reports function here, updates. So updating is really easy. And we can go ahead and get all the updates if we wanted to. And this is my first time using it just like you guys would. So I really want to test it and see if there's any kind of glitches with this. We got the settings. And we can go ahead and choose our language and choose metric or imperial. We got the remote access feature here. So you basically use Team Viewer. Leave this connected to the vehicle. Make sure you have Wi Fi. And as long as you have Wi Fi, you can go ahead and control this from the comfort of your garage or your shop. And under more, we have the X Tool Cloud. Basically, it's going to go ahead and launch a browser, and you can go online. So let's go ahead and try out this auto scan function here. And this is a pretty nice side screen. It's definitely usable and very easy to handle. We're gonna go ahead and see if the auto scan works. And so far, the unit has only detected the engine control module. There's a total of 35 detectable modules and only one has been successful so far. Now we have two. So out of the 35, only two modules come up. This is kind of disappointing because I have an airbag light on and this is not going to work for that because I'm not able to access that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and try to see if I can go around this some other way. Let's see if we can go ahead and select the SRS manually here. And again, this is not updated for the 907. That's why we saw the 906 select it and I'm gonna go ahead and try this on a different vehicle and see if we have better luck there so far this tool is not looking fully optimized for the newer vehicles that are on the market so before we actually plug this into another vehicle let's check out what comes with the EZ400 Pro and I went ahead and did an update this morning again so as I'm doing this video and before we connect to that vehicle just know everything is up to date so I'm gonna go ahead and give this the best possible chance of succeeding. So we have the scan tool here itself. And 
You're also going to get the cable here so you can connect this to the vehicle. And in America, we're using a 16 pin adapter like this. However, this is going to come with a whole slew of adapters here in this hard shell case. So let's go check out what's actually inside this hard shell case. So we got the certificate of quality here and the three years of updates. We get all the different adapters here. And the adapters are actually labeled. So this is for Honda, Kia. We got one for Toyota, Fiat. And this one looks like it's for Suzuki. We got a Hyundai one or Hyundai. We got a power cable here. So the USB cable here is used to charge up the scan tool. And it's going to be the one that they use on the PlayStation 4, which was going to be the B style connector here. I wish it was USB C, as that would just make it a lot easier. And we got the power adapter here with the US and EU style connector, which is pretty cool. Again, I just use my phone charger with the included cable from my PlayStation 4 to charge it up instead. And this is where the 16 pin connector goes, which I already have attached here. The wire is going to go over here. And at the top here, we have more connectors. So in here, we have a battery connection, a cigarette lighter connection. And this is the Mercedes style connector like this, the round one. More connectors here. This right here is going to be for the BMWs, Mitsubishi, Benz. Yeah, so you got a bunch of different connectors here. So this is pretty cool that all these are included. So really good job as far as the packaging. Really impressed with the quality of the case. So now that we know what's included, let's go ahead and connect this up to the Prius here and to see if we're going to have better luck on this vehicle. And let's go ahead and try out the scan feature here now. So it detected that it was a Toyota. My ignition is on. We're going to choose the area. And it does not have radar cruise. We're going to do an auto scan. Wow, that's pretty fast. So it's gone through and already scanned 10 modules. It's got a total of 39. So this is definitely looking better than the Mercedes. All right, so the scan is done. And I had a possible 39 modules available it went ahead and detected a total of 24 of them so about 15 of the modules could not be scanned and if we look through this we can see that there's a fault code right here on the passenger side motor and let's hit diagnose and it lets us know what this computer actually controls and we're going to hit ok we can go ahead and read the trouble codes it lets us know that there's something going on with the, the switch on the passenger side we can go back. We can go ahead and clear the data if I wanted to. We could do live data. We could do an actuation test. And we got a special functions here. So let's go ahead and hit that special functions. Again, nothing here is supported. Activation test. So we're going to go to the windows here. So let's go ahead and try out this window. We're going to go ahead and roll up the window. That works. OK. So that actuation test is good. So we do have the trouble code here too. So if I was really trying to troubleshoot this, I can go ahead and grab that code right there. And this is going to be on the Toyota side. And the B is going to stand for body. Since this is not an engine control unit issue, this is has something to do with the power windows. I can go ahead and Google that code. I might go ahead and get some more relevant data in regards to this code I could also go back and I can clear this let's see if it's able to do it so clear was done let's go ahead and read it nothing's available and now it shows that that code is no longer there so the clearing did work and let's go ahead and go into the engine control module right up here and we're gonna go into actuation test and right here, we're going to go and try some bi-directional features. Let's go ahead and activate the water pump here because you can literally hear it when you do. We do not need to monitor data, but if you did, you could go ahead and monitor the data as you're doing this. So these are all the different data points I can go ahead and monitor. So let's just choose the top four. And 
there's going to be more available. I'm going to hit OK. And now what I can do is go ahead and turn on that motor. And I just heard the water pump turn on. And the water pump is cycling right now at 2920. And it's supposed to be at 3000 RPM. So if I had an issue on this vehicle where the vehicle was overheating. And I turned on that water pump and it was only turning at 1000 RPMs. That might be the reason why the vehicle is overheating. So this is really nice that we have that. We also have the total distance traveled here. We got the battery voltage. And one thing I did want to point out is when you are using the unit and it's plugged into the vehicle, it is being powered off the vehicle. So if your unit is running low on battery, since this is not Bluetooth, you don't have to worry about this particular unit dying out on you. However, if you're programming anything that's going to be a little bit more sensitive, like a new computer, an ABS pump, you want to make sure that your battery voltage is going to be right around 12 or higher. If it's not, go ahead and put it on a battery charger as you do not want to do any programming if the battery voltage is lower than around 12 volts. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the water pump now. There we go. We can see that the water pump turned off. So let's take a look at this active test here or the actuation test on the engine control module. We have a EVAP purge. We have a vacuum pump. And so we have a lot of different features we can go ahead and activate here which is really nice and on these videos it's kind of hard to go and demonstrate some of these actuation tests for you unless they're really visual but the whole idea is if you had an issue with some component in the vehicle you don't have to go and possibly access a certain part of the engine or the switch you can go ahead and just activate it here so if, for example if I want to go put gas in and my door for the fuel was not opening up I can go ahead and hit this button if the button was not working I don't have to go and try to troubleshoot because I could literally come in here go to activate the fuel door right here and I could hit on and there you go guys that's why it's so important whenever you're working on a vehicle always have the vendor <laughs> send you a list of non-supported features or supported features because I just tried to activate the fuel filler opener which is that switch and again it does not work so kind of disappointing let's go ahead and try out a couple of more items on here including the live data see how well they did it with this so let's just grab the total miles the battery voltage and intake temperature the water pump speed we're going to go ahead and combine all of these different parameters here. So you can see that I got a total of four graphs here. And again, everything's on one graph. My motor's on. Right when the motor turned on, you can see that the battery voltage dipped. As soon as it dipped, it went ahead and is now at a very stable voltage. So that's pretty accurate and there's really no lag. I like that a lot. Now I'm going to go into the hybrid control unit here. Let's go to actuation. And the actuation test on the hybrid systems are not supported. So under live data, this is going to be live data for the whole vehicle. It doesn't seem to be correlated with just the hybrid system. We have a total of 254 data streams available. Anyway, this definitely does work on the Toyota side a lot better than the Mercedes side. However, it's not complete. And if you guys are really buying one of these scan tools like this for the special functions here, the 16 available special functions, just make sure that you email the vendor and ask for a list of supported features. Again, this vehicle does not have the electronic parking brake on here. It does not have the injector coating. This is a lot of times for the BMWs. It is not a diesel vehicle right there. And so the airbag reset would apply if I had an issue with that. And if you want to get the most amount of tool for your money, email the vendor your VIN and they'll send you a list of supported features. And so overall, I do like this tool. I am going to tell you guys, you do get a lot for what you pay for because you're getting a lot of connectors. You're going to get three years of updates. Hey everybody, it's Random Fix. If you guys are enjoying this video because I spent a lot of time trying to give you guys the best reviews on these scan tools, I would really appreciate if you guys would give the video a thumbs up. If you guys are new to the channel and you guys like watching really honest and detailed reviews of scan tools, 
and random things, consider subscribing to the Random Fix channel because it's absolutely free. And again, it would mean the world to me. Thanks for your support. So before I give this a random fix tool grade, I went ahead and triggered a check engine light on the vehicle right there and the airbag light. And let's see if this could go ahead and clear it. So we'll go ahead and run an auto scan. And I apologize that I'm not doing a video share, but this particular scan tool does not have that feature available. So it does have Wi-Fi, but it does not allow you to go ahead and record the screen as I normally do in my other videos for you guys. So you get a better idea about the display quality. And let's go ahead and just do a quick system select here. We'll choose the engine. We'll read the code. So you can see this is going really quick. So as far as speed, this gets a complete 10. I've not seen other sub $1,000 tools go this fast. So we have all the codes here that are confirmed and pending. And we're gonna come back here. We're gonna go and clear that code. That's done. So the code is gone now. Let's go into the airbag system, which is the SRS system. We can go ahead and read the codes are there. They're in the history. Let's go ahead and clear this. It's done. And now no more codes. So it definitely does do a good job of getting rid of some of those basic codes for the engine and the SRS system. And just to make sure you guys understand, I always try to do my best when I record these videos and try to give the unit the highest score possible. So as time goes on, this unit is definitely going to improve as this is going to be a rebrand and relaunch of an older unit. So this is the 2022 version, and this is the software that I'm using right here. So if you're watching this at a later date, I would go ahead and check the comments down below as there might be a lot of improvements in the unit. Hey everybody, now is my favorite part of the video. This is where we're going to go ahead and give this tool a random fix tool grade so you guys can decide for yourself. So let's talk a little bit about the unit itself. So we have a nice size display over here. We saw that the unit is super reactive. There's really no lag. It's touch screen. It has a Wi-Fi built in. We got 16 reset functions and the major ones that we're looking to do on the weekend repairs are definitely going to be covered. And again, you're going to get two years of warranty on the unit and three years of updates which is great and overall I'm gonna go ahead and give this unit a 76 out of 100 and I wish I could give this a higher score however I just saw it lacking vehicle coverage with the Mercedes not being supported and I know this unit is gonna get better in time so if you guys do want to see an updated video please comment down below as I would love to give you guys better guidance in the future I'll have links and special coupons available at the unit and I'm here for you guys if you have any questions. And I really appreciate the vendor from XTool sending me this unit. And I hope you guys appreciate the fact that they're willing to go ahead and allow me the freedom to go ahead and give you guys the honest review so you guys can make a better decision for yourself. Please leave your comments down below. If you guys think I'm being too harsh about the unit, I know it's a sub $600 unit. However, I know $600 is a lot of money and some scan tool manufacturers alone or charging $540 per year after the initial one or two years ends on the update. So let me know down below what you guys think about that. Thanks.